Today on the show, sit back and enjoy a nice cup of tea made from the eyelashes of a dragon for the finest Chinese martial arts epic ever to come out of Russia. The movie, Iron Mask. The actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The podcast, Nothing Movies. Um, new episodes, straight into, no rambling, straight, straight into... Oh, I would love no rambling. A hard, <laughs> a, a hard, hard intro? A hard, hard start, A yeah. hard start. Okay, mm. cool. Hard starts from now, a hard start 2022. It's, oh, jeez. This hard start doesn't count. That's my, that's my New Year's resolution, the hard starts. The hard starts. <laughs> the hard starts. Like, that should have been, like, the motto for 2020. <laughs> the hard starts. <laughs> Sounds like something you don't want to have. No, so, of course yeah, not. Yeah, I sound like... <laughs> What's wrong with Grandpa? He's already... The hard start. He's got the hard starts. <laughs> oh, damn. Poor, oh, poor Grandpa. We gotta look into a home. This We're not gonna include this, are we? Uh, uh, man, I don't know. This come is Come on, man. Because, come on. Let's keep it. Whatever. This is the last... Okay. The, what the fuck? This let's is, just do it. This is the last official soft start. <laughs> <laughs> that'll and that'll the, be... Interesting. And from this point on, hard starts from all now on. All the way, on. yeah. Hard starts all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies... <laughs> however you wish to self-identify and welcome to nothing movies hey. where we ask the question the fuck is this it's the podcast where we go through an actor's filmography and choose three of the most anonymous and culturally untalked about movies that they've made and decide whether or not they've got a certain something or if they're just a whole lot of nothing oh you like that yeah how long did that take you uh I, like a couple of times like you can see <laughs> <laughs> you can see I've scratched out a lot of a lot of false starts. I, I What's was, the thing I was just saying? The hard starts. Yes, hard a starts. Lot of hard starts. A lot of these were soft starts. Mm. This was my first hard start. And that's only on that page. I want to look over to like a waste paper basket. It's just full of crumpled up paper. It's like, no, it's not right. It's, it doesn't flow well enough. I should get a, a waste paper basket and just fill it full of crumpled paper. I don't do a lot of writing, mm. but I just feel like that would make me impressive to people who came over to my apartment. Like, wow, know, Kaz wastes a lot of paper. He just think, <laughs> oh man, he has so many bit. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, they just open it up because they're curious what I wrote. It's all blank. They're not gonna. It's think, all just blank. Yeah, they're not gonna think of you as a genius. They're gonna think of you as wasteful. Oh, they're just like <laughs> uncrumbling them, and it's just all like it's just like, it's fooled you. It's just the lyrics to the Pina Colada song. <laughs> This would, one, too, is just escape. What's going on? You should, you should uncrumple it and be like, look on top of the bookshelf. And then you look, <laughs> <laughs> look under the sink. <laughs> just have like a whole thing going on yeah. all over the place. Mm. I'm Cass Lesgard. I'm Jameson Rafter. Hey, see how organic that was? Yeah. I was, I what, was me wor- saying my own name? Yeah, I was worried that you weren't going <laughs> to you were gonna get it immediately. You don't, you it's don't done do- three years where I just introduce you every time. Yeah. And you just went right into that. Good for you, buddy. Oh, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, you dumb bastard. You just give me like a gold star. It's in my waste paper basket. Hold on, mm. I peel. I peeled it off. Right, right, yeah. right. There's a few. There's a few gold stars on. I wrote quizzes mm. and then I I gave gold stars to myself. Yeah. Welcome to our inaugural episode of Nothing Movies. Welcome to the first episode of Nothing Movies, where we ask the question: The fuck is this? That's right. The old podcast name is the new motto mm. of the new show. And uh, yes, so we did a whole introductory thing explaining this. But for those of you who didn't listen to that, I'll just do the the the, the briefest. Of recaps, the briefest that I can do oh, without, be the day. without going off on, on, on a tangent. Yes, as I said before, this is the podcast where we pick an actor and we go through their filmography. We pick the three most anonymous movies on their CV and we do a little loose trilogy of, mm-hmm. of those films. And, and at the end of it, we ask ourselves, uh, what have we learned? What have we learned about this particular actor? What mm-hmm. have we learned about these movies? Do these movies deserve to be anonymous or do they deserve more time? Time in the sun are they hidden gems exactly and for our first episode we're gonna spotlight an actor that everyone has heard of who is <laughs> a household name amazingly given the fact that uh, his name is uh, quite a mouthful mm. but you know I mean I feel like a lot of people say that about this guy but really you look at that name it's pronounced the way it's spelled yeah. Like, people like to say, like, if you can pronounce... The actor's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. The actor is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and pe- people like people love to say, it's all like, you know, like, if you can pronounce Arnold Schwarzenegger, you can pronounce my name. It's all like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's not, not that, that hard, hard a name. And it's not even that hard of a name to spell. 
You know, because it's just no. emblazoned on all the posters. Schwarzenegger. Everyone knows how to spell that name. But yeah, this guy, like like the quintessential international movie star, as Bill Burr famously said, he's been in the zone for four decades. You know, like everything he touches, like just turns to gold. Even though he's not that strong of an actor, he is carried on by charisma. He is an interesting actor. He has had an interesting trajectory. Because mm-hmm. he started off not as an actor. He started off in the world of bodybuilding bodybuilding but also very smart guy yeah you know he was a millionaire before he made his first movie just through investment alone Mm -hmm. so it's weird how he got like this because of like the type of movies he made people assumed he was of one sort of persuasion but he's always been an insanely intelligent guy Mm -hmm. he's been very savvy very very business savvy he's been a big wheel behind like the production of all of his movies as well uh he's never you know like stayed with one thing of course he had his dalliance with politics where he was the governor of california Mm -hmm. uh this is not a political show so we don't really have opinions on that one way or the other but he's sort of viewed as like the nicest republican most left-leaning people will concede that like arnold schwarzenegger is like their most beloved republican yeah yeah he's like as a even though he's like retired from politics i think he's like involved in like counter gerrymandering he's leading efforts yes. that way yeah 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 and he seems to have like the least bad takes of of most republicans Ar- he seems he seems like he has empathy Arnold Schwarzenegger is an interesting guy in that, like, even having, like, a couple of bombs in his filmography, like, that never seems to, like, dampen his uh, trajectory. And, like, even his personal scandals don't seem to tarnish his public image. He's just that beloved of a figure. Yeah, I would argue that Arnold currently right now, Mm. but he's sort of, like, in, like, the twilight of his career sure when he came back because we'll go into it we'll go into like the arnold filmography like super briefly here but Mm. when he came back from being the governor of Mm. california he had a bit of a of a lapsed start getting back into films Mm. and i would argue that after 2013 a a lot of his output could be in theory nothing movies Mm -hmm. you know like these these are the movies that haven't quite like caught on yet but he's he's making really interesting decisions he's trying new things that that he's never tried before and the movie we're talking about today is certainly no exception Mm -hmm. to this rule so this is the reason that i wanted to start off with arnold schwarzenegger is entirely because i wanted to talk about today's movie Mm. this movie caught me completely off guard i was browsing through netflix one day when i saw a a little banner for uh, a movie that was titled i need to find it because there are so many titles to this movie isn't it voyage to china mystery of the dragon seal oh, okay. colon journey to china journey to china and i'm like well that's quite a mouthful but i looked at it and i'm all like oh that's jackie chan oh this is like a a latter day jackie chan actioner mm-hmm. so as i was reading the synopsis for it you know netflix started playing a clip from the movie mm-hmm. as it does and who should jaunt onto screen in a fabulous uh, mutton mu- chop mustache <laughs> mutton chop combo and wearing a fabulous outfit mm-hmm. but Arnold himself yeah, Arnold. and then Arnold and Jackie start having a little kung fu fight and I'm like whoa wait hold on a now second hold the phone here hold yeah. the phone hold that phone y- yeah the what two- is this where did this come from the, like the two biggest names of like international huge, box office huge, action stars two of the hugest movie stars of all time and they're finally squaring off together in the twilight years of their lives yes in the twilight years of 2019 mm-hmm. in in this movie called Mystery of the Dragon Seal Journey to China. But then I clicked on it again, and the title changed. And it changed to the title of the episode of what we're calling it, Iron Mask. We will get into it. We will get into the backstory of this movie because it is oh, surprising. I can't, I Jameson, can't wait. Did you, did, you didn't do any research on it? You didn't look this up? I assumed going into that it was going to be like a Chinese knockoff of the Man in the Iron Mask. Like this is like a... a that would a, make sense. That would odd, be a good assumption to make. Yeah, this is like loosely based on like the um, uh, the Alexander Dumas book. Is, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just like a, a book adaptation. And it's not that. No, it's not. <laughs> no. It no. is really hard to narrow down what this movie is. And when I started looking into it i was so surprised and i'm very excited to share with you Mm -hmm. what exactly this movie is may i make one guess uh right off the bat here please do is it a loose sequel to another movie an unrelated movie it is indeed yes you (laughs) you nailed it jameson this is a loose sequel to another movie and we will get into it but before 
we get into it, hmm. let's talk a little bit more about Arnold. Sure. Let's run down the man's filmography. We don't need to go into every single movie well, with like intense detail or whatnot. Especially for stretching this over three episodes, maybe just like, I don't know, how are we going to divvy this up? Like what he did in the 80s, what he did in the 90s, what he did in the 2000s. I don't know. Okay, do you want to just like go to like... 1989 then and then we'll do like a little bit every episode sure or do we just want to like what do you what do you want to do i just (laughs) thought we should like run down his filmography really quick and try and identify how many nothing movies Mm -hmm. he has made let's just do that and and i'll omit the ones that we're we've already earmarked for episodes because Mm -hmm. that's kind of giving the game away but uh we'll just do this like really quickly because this is kind of fun this will give you like a nice refresher of the career who who arnold schwarzenegger is in case you forgot who is this young upstart named Mm -hmm. arnold schwarzenegger so jameson can you tell me arnold schwarzenegger's first movie oh wasn't it that uh hercules in new york movie hercules in new york from Mm -hmm. 1970 where he is credited as arnold strong Mm -hmm. which was slightly confusing because his co-star in that movie is Arnold Stang. So that's what's on the poster of that. Stang, right. Stang and Strong. Stang and Strong. Uh, but yes, that's a movie where he is completely dubbed. He's not mm. using his voice at all. I don't think he had a, a firm grasp on the uh, the English language yeah. at that point. 1976, he did a movie called Stay Hungry. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, I believe he got a Golden Globe for most pro. Yes, uh, best acting debut in a motion picture. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Stay Hungry uh, is a movie by uh, Bob Raffleson, who directed Five Easy Pieces and The King of Marvin Gardens. There are a lot of directors from like the 70s that had like big careers in the 70s but couldn't keep up that momentum to to prove my point like have you ever heard of bob raffleson no no yeah like he's not like you know he's not like a bugdanovich or a scorsese or he's not from that collection of guys from the 70s who just went on to be the legendary filmmaker no he kept no spielberg making... no lucas no, no scorsese he kept yeah. making some stuff he worked with jack nicholson a lot but uh this is a movie that arnold did with uh, jeff bridges and sally field oh and it's about a uh, syndicate wants to buy a whole district to rebuild it they've bought every house except a small gym olympic where mr austria joe santo prepares for the mr universum championship a mm. month ahead i don't know what this movie's about look there are lots of movies in the 70s <laughs> that like they are impossible to figure out what their plots are about they're mostly just character pieces aren't they i character think this pieces is probably set in, it. Set in, yeah. like, the inner city. i think jeff bridges is like a wheeler dealer and he's trying to get this building and he meets arnold schwarzenegger mm. and he's all like you can't have my building look at my muscles and sally field is also <laughs> there maybe there's a love trilogy I'm not sure. Love trilogy? A love trilogy. It's a love... No, it's a love trilogy. Oh, I see. It's, it goes on for three movies. Mm. But anyway, uh, Stay Hungry. Is that a nothing movie? Uh, have you earmarked it for a future episode? Well, no, but like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to narrow down... Part of going through like this CV here is trying to narrow down precisely what a nothing movie well, is. The, the problem is if we're going to go as far back as the 70s, like we have no frame of reference of like how well that was really well known to the public back then. Yeah. Because you know, like not everything from that era would have gone on to be like, you know, this huge franchise kind of hit. It could have just been like a small sleeper hit. Was this popular at the time mm-hmm. and how has it? Because I feel like that's a good way to define nothing movies is it hasn't endured. Yeah. You know, like it has like disappeared with time Mm -hmm. so i don't know i'd have to like look into it a little more whether or not we should define stay hungry as a nothing movie but we'll just put we'll put that in the maybe pile sure okay but uh moving on in 1982 he of course did conan the barbarian Mm -hmm. definitely a something movie yeah uh he followed that up with two years later with one two punch of uh, conan the destroyer the not as good sequel Mm -hmm. and a little movie called the terminator yeah thoughts on the terminator what is there to say about the Terminator? I mean, it's 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 a fantastic movie. Uh, a lot of people call it like a great sci-fi thriller. I consider it more of a horror movie myself. It's definitely a horror movie. Absolutely, like it plays yeah. like a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it becomes increasingly more relevant with every passing year. Yeah, with the discourse of because because like when you when you break it down, like there's lot there's lots going on in the Terminator to do. You know, with like the future and the rise of the machines and everything. But when you break it down to its basis level, it is a movie about an innocent woman being stalked by a, a, man, a man who wants to... A, a monster in the guise of a man mm. who wants to harm her. It's, and unfortunately, that discourse continues to be more relevant as time goes on. And it's a um, it's a perfect... like That wasn't James Cameron's first movie, right? It was his first successful movie. His right, first yeah. movie was Piranha Part 2, right, The Spawning. Yeah. Yeah. A movie he didn't 
finish. You yeah. got kicked off of that. But it's the, I th I consider it like a perfect modest budget. Like what can what what can we mine out of like something so small? Something as simple as like you know this this small budget. It's a man chasing a woman. Well, that man is actually from the future, and, yes. we're, and we're going to like throw all our money towards like the special effects and the makeup to really convey this monster. I believe it came about when James Cameron had a nightmare, mm. and he had a nightmare about the metal chrome, the metal skeleton. skeleton, yeah. And he woke up, and that image just stayed with him, and yeah. he, he built the Terminator around that. Yeah. I will say, uh, Terminator Two is one of my absolute favorite movies. I think that's like probably my number one action movie, especially I mean, the director's cut of it, and I think it still holds up to this day. It's still great. It's one yeah. of those early '90s movies. Uh, along with Jurassic Park that looks better than most modern blockbusters. Absolutely. Uh, it, it doesn't look dated at all. They just kind of like hit the nail on the head with that one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you prefer Terminator 2 to the I, first Terminator. I do. And like there's like this, this amazing uh, thing on the director commentary where James Cameron is like, oh yeah, you see that part where a helicopter goes underneath uh, a highway overpass? Yeah, that's a helicopter going underneath yeah. a highway overpass. We just did that. Yeah, yeah we just did it because fuck it, right? Uh, James Cameron is a maniac. Yes. Uh, but he is just one of those rare directors where he has never been made a failure yeah you know like other than piranha part two which isn't really his movie his mm. first his first movie is terminator yeah and then every subsequent movie he has made mm. has made money and holy shit i would say like terminator 2 is one of those rare sequels where you can just watch that one first you can completely skip the sure. first terminator yeah. totally yeah yeah uh, it doesn't have to feel i agree with that okay. anyway anyway moving on <laughs> moving on all right 1985 uh two movies uh red sonia which oh, is yeah which is sort of not quite a conan spin-off because he's in that, but he's not playing Conan. Mm. But it's from the same, I want to say the same creator as Conan. Sure. Or, like, there were definitely, like, Red Sonya comics yeah. on the shelves next to the Conan comics. Yeah, she was, like, the, the She-Ra to Arnie's He-Man. Yes. And, like, to, like, that's the easiest way I can describe it. Um, sure. Uh, not not, not seen, knowing anything about not the, knowing the anything Sonya about comics. It, uh, let's anything. say that. Yeah. Uh, 1985, he also made Commando. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his Great most, movie. One of his most violent movies. One mm -hmm. of his most, uh, I feel like, Terminator, obviously, he started off with I'll Be Back. Mm. That's not necessarily, like, a quippy movie. He just has that. Commando is the beginning of Quip. Oh, world. yeah. Yeah. What he was, like, most known for. The action one-liners. Uh, you know what I'm trying to let say. Let off some steam, Bennett. Yes. Yeah, the uh, around. Uh, remember when... Uh, I think that might be from Predator. That's Predator. Uh, but the, the best one is, uh, remember when I said I'd kill you last? Yeah, you did. I, I lied. lied. <laughs> um, parodied brilliantly in uh, The Simpsons. Remember when I said I'd eat you last? I lied. Mm. Uh, great stuff there. Uh, 1986. Here's another one I feel is possibly straddling the line of a nothing movie. Raw Deal. Do you remember this one? Raw Deal. Is that the one he did with uh, Jim Belushi? Nope. No, that that's is, Red Heat. That's right? Red Heat. Yeah. That's a few years later. Right. Raw Deal. He plays a former FBI agent turned small town sheriff. Yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a small town sheriff I makes can, perfect sense. I can see it. In yeah. America, mm -hmm. uh, he agrees to help the FBI chief infiltrate the Chicago mafia when the FBI chief's son is killed by them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just an action movie. It's just an action movie he made in the 80s. That sounds like an Arnie movie. <laughs> it doesn't star anyone else. Robert Davi is in it, but other than that, mm. yeah, that might be a nothing movie maybe. i just yeah. i'm not familiar with that one okay. frankly so uh we'll see maybe maybe that one goes into the pile just a forgotten arnie uh, classic 1987 another one two punch of arnie classics the running man mm -hmm. and predator yeah uh both Good. fun for completely different reasons oh absolutely yeah yep 1988 this was a big year for him because this was his first kind of swerve into a genre that he would stay in for a while 1988 the aforementioned red heat mm -hmm. but also Twins, yeah, his first comedy, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, everyone was was genuinely surprised by. It was a colossal hit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just, it's just like one of those movies. I mean, like the obvious parallel is that movie Central Intelligence, where the tagline is a big Johnson and a little heart. Oh, I, I the Dwayne Johnson Kevin Hart one. You know how forgettable that that movie is. Fairly forgettable. Oh yeah, I, I, I completely forgot yeah. it. Well, but it's I just also, the idea. I also didn't see it. It's so just funny. the It's just the genius idea idea of big guy little guy yeah right it's that contrast yeah that works out well thoughts on twins passing thoughts on i haven't seen twins in a long time Did, have i even seen yeah i saw twins twins uh, is definitely a movie that like played constantly on tbs yes that's true like at any mm -hmm. given time you could turn on mm -hmm. tbs and twins might be playing 
Yeah, no, I got no real thoughts on it. I mean, it's uh, Danny DeVito at his sleazy best, and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just this, like, dopey, lovable fish out of water who, like, I'm your, bro I'm your brother. I'm your brother. Of yeah. course, it's so obvious. Yeah, and they, like, they take to each other quite fast, if I remember correctly. I don't even remember what the plot is. I don't remember is, it either. Other than the fact that they, they were, are twins. They were, like, separated at birth, and... I don't yes, know. but what's the plot? What's the... What's the what happens? <sighs> He hooks up with a lady. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> there must be like a conflict or something. There, there is. Be, isn't there's like, like bad guys or yeah, something? Yeah, Danny right? is like he's in uh, hot water with like some criminal or something. That makes know. sense. Yeah. That movie, of course, was directed by Ivan Reitman. Same with Arnie's follow-up movie in 1990, Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. Which was released the same year as an, uh, he he does this thing where he releases two iconic movies in the same year because he did Kindergarten Cop and then he did Total Recall. Yeah, just knocking him out of the very park. Very different movies. Yeah, I mean, this is just cementing him as like just like a global superstar everything he touches turns to gold around this point yeah and he started that trend that most action heroes in like the 2000s and 2010s had to follow as well of big tough guy surrounded by kids mm -hmm. Dwayne Johnson did it Vin Diesel did it Dave Batista has done it like yeah. every John Cena playing with fire like mm -hmm. every big, like big guy who's like trying to like get like the action hero crown has to do with like a dumb kid movie. They have to well. promise that they're good with kids. Yeah. You know, they're not all a big scary tough guy. Can we get them in a tutu yeah. at some point? Mm -hmm. Terminator 2, 1991, we've talked about that. Total Recall. Total Recall, we talked about that. 1993, Last Action Hero. Another uh, movie that has played constantly on TV. Man, I think that movie gets a bad rap. That movie, I, th I think that movie has gone through a, a cultural reappropriation. I think a lot of people look at that movie with... A certain amount of fondness now. Yeah, I mean, like, like I, I don't know if at the time people were just like, uh, how dare this movie? Like, oh, it's just hitting all the cliches. It's checking all the boxes. That's the point of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big bombastic love letter to the blockbuster. To, like love letter to the genre. I love like the police precinct where they're partnering up like with a cartoon cast. With the cartoon cast, voiced like, by Danny DeVito. Your, your partner's a woman. Your partner's an old man. Your partner's a kid. Your partner's a cartoon character. It's it's fucking great. <laughs> like I remember like so many things from that movie. Like. Like, apparently, like, like, that's supposed to be, like, a bad movie, but mm. I remember, like, so many little details. I remember F. Murray Abraham's character is named John Practice, and he he, he introduces <laughs> himself by saying, like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And all turns around and has a big smile on his face, like, practice, you son of a bitch! And it's like, <laughs> God, that's a terrible line, yeah. but, like, I remember it. Also, it's got a fucking, it's got uh, Charles Dance in it as the, as the bad guy. He was... Charles Dance, who... Might show up in this movie. Well, he... I mean, he got to show up in this movie. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. Yes, it's the long-awaiting reunion of Arnold and Charles Dance, <laughs> even though they don't share any scenes. So 1994, again, another action movie comedy duo. We mm. got True Lies. Yeah. Good, great movie. Mm. And then Junior, which I feel yeah. is like the first time that like the whole comedy thing is kind of starting to run on fumes. That's just kind of it's just a weird premise. It's just an insane idea for a movie. Mm -hmm. Not great. Even the reunion of Danny DeVito and, yeah. and Arnie couldn't save that. And then I would say True Lies is his last bona fide Gr great hit. movie. Yeah, this is where it starts going downhill. 1996 eraser mm -hmm. a movie that i have not seen i don't uh, i don't know anything about it i wouldn't call it a nothing movie though because i think other people like it sure right i the only thing i could tell you about that movie is uh when i was in elementary school i think i would have been like grade three or four our teacher had a big poster of uh eraser i remember that I, that poster is like fairly iconic i don't know though, why yeah is it because it's like all green tinted i don't know is it like is it teachers had it because it's, a it's an eraser it's an eraser and that's like a school supply i suppose yeah the principal <laughs> ordered a bunch of erasers and like, oh, they open the box and it's just a bunch of posters from some arnie movie. also having not seen this movie i'm delighted to find out that the name of his character is eraser yeah i did not know that i thought it was like a title he they, had they call me the eraser <laughs> they call me eraser it, no the i i erase <laughs> problems and then in the same year he made eraser he made jingle all the way one yep. of his most reviled movie that for some some people watch it every year Friend of the show, Hannah Snyder, watches it pretty religiously. There we go. If I understand correctly. Uh, and then he followed Jingle all the way up with probably the first Arnold movie I ever saw in movie theaters. Oh. Batman and Robin. Oh, you poor bastard. Because, <laughs> like, I was way too young to see anything else mm -hmm. at that point. So that was definitely sort of like the first kid-friendly... I guess Jingle All the Way was, but, yeah. like, I wasn't watching that. Still, yeah. Yeah, and, like, he's first billed in that. He's the only actor to play a villain in the Batman movie to 
be first build other than Jack Nicholson mm. in the first Batman movie. That makes sense. So, you know, he's throwing his weight around. Also, at that point in time, George Clooney was still a TV guy. He wasn't like... Right. So that was that. I mean, we don't need to talk about Batman and Robin. The, the less said about it, the better. One of the most eminently watchable, terrible movies ever made. Mm. And Arnold is completely off the chain. But to be in, to his credit, he was directed to do that. Yeah. So he was doing what he was told to do. So you can't really what blame him that What else can he do with much. that fucking material? <laughs> 1999 end of days yep him fighting satan mm -hmm. uh, one of the rare movies where arnold dies at the end yep 2000 the sixth day arnold's a clone shot here in vancouver yep that's like they won't fucking shut up about that one when, whenever we're discussing that movie 2002 collateral damage a movie that was famously delayed because of the september 11th attacks because mm -hmm. that movie opens with a terrorist attack mm -hmm. that's a bit of a nothing movie i don't think anyone talks about collateral damage no that that movie kind of just got swept under the rug because it, it just got like released in 2002 because people were like well we shot this we got to get it out here yeah. so we'll put, put it away and then terminator 3 rise of the machines mm -hmm. 2003 and then he becomes the governor of california for yeah. like a decade yeah re uh, retires from movies for uh for a couple of years there you yeah. know he does a few cameos mm -hmm. primarily he does the only other time he and jackie chan have started a movie together I was say, yeah. 2004's mm -hmm. around the world in 80 days mm -hmm. where he plays Prince Hoppy, okay. who I think tries to get, like, the girl to join his harem mm -hmm. or something. I haven't seen Around the World in 80 Days. Ooh, that, that does not hold up well. <laughs> oh, oh yeah? Oh, you, you've seen the Jackie Chan no, Around the World uh, in 80 the Days? No, oh, the, the, con oh, the, the concept thing. of, of yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger inviting a woman to join his harem. <laughs> he was playing off of uh, a real life experience. Yeah. He also, uh, during his term as governor of California, he also managed to star in all three of the Expendables movies. Yeah. He, he's in all of those. Uh, mm -hmm. He's not in them for very long, but he's definitely in no, them. No, but hey, in, uh, in Iron Mask, he's in it longer than he was in the first six months. That is true. He is, he's in that uh, slightly more in, in Iron Mask. And then uh, when, he, uh, when his term is over, uh, not term, like he, he was defeated. Right? Yeah, he, he wasn't re he, he wasn't reelected after He wasn't reelected. Yeah. Right. How long did governor terms last? Because he was governor for a while, right? Oh I, I mean it kind of depends for uh like per state. I I'm gonna say uh it's like every four years. We got every... two more episodes on him, so we can right. come back. Yeah, to we'll that look knowledge. into it. So when he comes back, his first movie back, not a movie a lot of people remember that this is his first movie back. 2013's The Last Stand. The Last Stand. Where oh. he uh, once again is like a small town sheriff. And then a bunch of bad guys come through. And Does him, that have Johnny Knoxville? That's him and Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Forrest Whitaker. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like I said, after he comes back from the being a politician, mm -hmm. he starts making movies that no one really remembers. Mm -hmm. Last Stand. Uh, he makes Escape Plan, his first official co-starring role with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Uh, that movie now has two sequels that he's not in. For some reason, Stallone <laughs> well, likes to do these prison movies. All right. What else? Sabotage. Mm, Remember that? No. That is... <laughs> Members of an elite DEA task force find themselves being taken down one after one after they rob a drug cartel safe house. It is apparently loosely based on And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Sam Worthington, Terrence Howard, Josh Holloway, Joe Manginello. I have no idea how to say that guy's name. Oh, I know. Joe um, Manginello. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. He's the guy who's married to Sofia Vergara and he's a huge D&D &D nerd. And he's jacked. I love jacked D and D nerds. Yeah, you, everyone need every campaign needs one jacked dude <laughs> in the back, and he's playing like the a bard. bard. The bard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I went to. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, some movies that I won't mention because we might do episodes on them. But I also mention Terminator Genesis. That's him going back to that oh, well oh, let's after not, let's after not, the fourth movie that yeah, he wasn't in. Let's not bring up the other Terminator sequels. That's just depressing. <laughs> Okay, well, the only, the only other movie I was going to bring up was the fifth Terminator movie, Darth right. Vader. Yeah. So, yeah, and then there's some other shit in there that we didn't mention. We didn't mention Pumping Iron, the famous documentary that he's in that mm. just kind of, like, falls where he, he famously says that he he doesn't uh, drink milk, he only drinks beer. He has <laughs> opinions on coming. I don't remember what... I, like, I come all the time, I come in the evening, I come in the night, it's great, it's fun, I love coming. Yeah. I don't know! I don't remember what that... I don't remember what that quote is, but I just remember that's part of that documentary. <laughs> Lovely. It's a satisfying to me. As uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. So can you believe how much I am in heaven? I am like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose out in front of five thousand people. I get the same feeling. So I am coming day and night. I mean, 
it's terrific, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm in heaven. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I do need to watch that. <laughs> Okay, so that's the career of Arnold Schwarzenegger. After his turn as a politician, he makes a bunch of movies that... Kind of go nowhere. Kind of go nowhere, no one really remember, but pre-politician run... Couldn't name a bigger movie star. Yeah, yeah. Like, even like, even his bad movies are movies that people have seen and mm. people talk about and have opinions on. Mm -hmm. You know, like even stuff, even the most anonymous of, of those titles, like Collateral Damage, people still remember that as... The movie that got delayed because of 9-11. That, that's still like an Arnold movie that sticks in your craw. Yeah. You know, The Sixth Day. Couldn't tell you a thing about that, but I remember it. Mm. I remember it was a thing that happened. Yeah, I, I think it just is a testament to how, like, the the, the amount of strings of, of, of hits that he had is enough to salvage him where, like, the one or two misfires just don't, like, diminish him as of star power. People still know Arnie. People still love Arnie. And, you know, the, like, the, the bombs aren't enough to kill his career. Whereas nowadays, I'd say, like, you're only as big as your last hit. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, there's plenty of, uh, stars that, like, were kind of built to be, like, the next big action tough guy. And, you know, what happens? Like, what happened to, us? Uh, what's his name? Sam Worthington? Or uh, Jai Courtney. Well, he, Sam Worthington showed up in in One Sabotage, the... and Jai Courtney showed up in uh, Terminator Genesis. Yeah. So they all inevitably go back to Arnold movies. Oh, geez, I never. Uh, could... Wow, that's true. Yeah. Uh, huh. I mean, also, it's, it should be noted that Sam Worthington will probably at some point end up as the lead character of Avatar Two and Avatar Three. Hmm. But like, how funny is that? That like those movies are still being made. Those movies are still coming out. Mm -hmm. And in the time in between the first movie and the second movie, Sam Worthington's career has just fucking <laughs> sunk <laughs> to the bottom of the ocean. I mean, it's James Cameron's got to hop in a submarine to go get Sam Worthington's Ooh, career. That's how, that's how deep he is. <laughs> Take that, Sam Worthington. <laughs> Someone who's more successful and famous and handsome than I am. Mm. Take it. <laughs> yeah. And like the upcoming movies that Arnold is doing... Like he, upcoming movies? He's still very much... You know what? Let's save that for another sure, episode. Okay. Well, we can talk about the upcoming movies. But, like, the the ones that have been rumored... Mm. I mean, this is the trend in Hollywood right now, is, like, bringing back old favorites. Mm -hmm. But, like, the there have been rumors that he wants to do a third Conan movie. Conan the... Oh, the, the king something? The king... Yeah, Conan the... King Con Conan, whatever. King Conan or something, yeah. They've been saying for a while that they want to make triplets with Eddie Murphy. Oh, okay. Which, like... That if they what? do that, if they do that, that's ending up on Amazon Prime, and it's gonna look like dog shit. Mm -hmm. That's not going to make it to fucking movie theaters. Right, yeah. And, like, who knows? You throw enough money at him, he'll come back for, like, Terminator 7. Like, he always yeah. comes back. He says I'll that be he'll back. be back. Mm -hmm. So, like... Man of his word. He is. Robot he of his word. He is a man of his word. And, you know, Michael Keaton is coming back to playing Batman mm -hmm. and, like, a couple of different things. So, who's to say in, like, a few years we we might not get, like, a, a little more, like, dramatic, pathos-filled take on Mr. Freeze. You know? <laughs> Where he's just, like, old Mr. Freeze is all like, I used to make jokes all the time. I don't make jokes anymore. <laughs> now everything is sad and lonely. A single tear will turn into a, a, a snowflake before it falls off my face. I was hoping... I think that actually happened in the movie, though. Man, so. I, I thought you were going to segue that into, like, another ice pun, but it just kept going on and on. Well, I can't make any ice puns because he famously made every ice pun that exists That's in that true. movie, so mm -hmm. there are no ice puns left. Yeah. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Arnie Schwartz. Schwarzenegger. Okay. Arn Schwartz. Strong. Arn, Arn S. Arnie Strong. Arnold. So. This, this is great content. This is great content. So let's veer into talking about Iron Mask. Yeah. Or Mystery of the Dragon Seal, Journey to China. Hey, I gotta take a piss break. Why don't we throw to a charity spot? Let's go to a charity spot. <laughs> we, we we'll were take a little... talking nonstop for like, what, half an hour? Half an hour. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We'll take a little charity spot, listen mm. to this charity spot. We'll, God, there needs to be like a, like an Arnold movie Pun for I'll like be back. Going to the back. I guess we'll be back. <laughs> I guess we'll be back. Stick around. Stick around. Today's charity shout out is for Q Community. Q Community is a nonprofit organization based in Vancouver, BC that works to improve queer, trans, and two spirit lives. They provide a safer space for LGBTQ2SAI plus people and their allies to fully self-express while feeling welcome and included. Their building serves as a catalyst for community initiatives and collective strength. 
They empower individuals to be their best selves through free counseling, information and referrals, access to gender-affirming chestware, and one-on-one -on -one peer support for youth. They strengthen the Vancouver community to be inclusive, connected, and resilient through support and social groups, special events, and volunteer and practicum opportunities. They offer queer competency workshops, educational resources, and consulting services, and are committed to anti-oppression and intersectionality, while also placing a focus on the reconciliation that this country must pay to the indigenous owners of this land. To make a donation or to volunteer, check the link in our show notes, or visit qmunity.ca slash take dash action slash donate. Jameson has returned from his total pee call. His total pee call. That was the pun. Mm -hmm. The pun was there. Mm -hmm. I, I needed a second to come up with it. If you had gone number two, it would have been kindergarten plop. But uh, it was uh, totally... I thought you were going to say if I was going number two, it would have been Terminator 3. <laughs> that, movie's, oh. that movie's okay. Uh, that's fallen out. That, of, you know, of like the shitty Terminator movies, that oh, movie yeah. is okay. Yeah, good point. But we're not talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger's other movies. We're talking specifically about one... Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and that movie is called Iron Mask. Except it's not called Iron Mask. It is actually called V2 Journey to China. Ah, the furthering adventures of Jonathan Green. Yes! <laughs> So you narrowed down on that. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, okay. you, it was you, a pretty big telegraph, actually. Yeah, they, 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 more, they more or less spelled it out in, in the, the opening sort of, like, introduction. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. But, like, okay, so <laughs> let's talk about this movie. Let's talk about how this movie is marketed. This movie is marketed 100% on the star power of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan. Yep. That would be what the poster looks like. Mm -hmm. Iron Mask, they are the biggest heads on the poster. Mm -hmm. Like, the further down you go, none of the other people are even mentioned but you you get this image in your head mm -hmm. and then you're like all right, all right this sure, looks great. Like, a, like a fun like rollicking sort of like fantasy adventure you turn it on you watch this and you get this massive exposition dump to a movie that you have not seen it is and you are not familiar with and you have no idea that this is actually the second part of a movie that you weren't familiar with yeah. So who the fuck is this guy? What is this franchise that we are like, okay, missing out so on? This is like if you go into see the Avengers and just before like the movie starts, it gives you like a, like a, a two minute montage of like the stuff that leads up to the Avengers without having, because you missed, like, like my dad, you missed all the other right. Avengers movies. This movie is like if Indiana Jones 2 took place in like Africa and Japan and Indiana Jones was like a minor character. Yes. Like it's not like it's the weirdest sequel. Mm -hmm. It's the weirdest trajectory for a sequel. So The Iron Mask is a sequel to the 2014 Russian fantasy horror blockbuster yeah. V, mm. which is spelled V I Y. Oh. Uh, in Russia, the film is called uh, V2, Journey to China. Mm -hmm. V was the highest grossing film in Russia in 2014, mm. but it went straight to video and streaming in the rest of the world and was released under the title of Forbidden Empire. Oh, okay. So V is based on the 1835 horror novella by Nikolai Gogol, in which a seminary student who gets trapped in a haunted village is tormented by witches and ghosts and eventually comes face to face with the V, a.k.a. the one who can see everything. Definite shades of Guillermo del Toro here. For sure, yeah. This movie basically plays out like Sleepy Hollow meets Army of Darkness. Uh, cool. It follows the inventor and cartographer Jonathan Green as he travels the world seeking his fortune, finding himself stranded in a haunted Cossack village in the center of a terrifying mystery. So I found out after the fact, yesterday, I watched... Iron Mask, mm. and then I had like a little more time in my day than I thought I did, so I just did like some looking around, mm. and I found V1 mm. on Amazon Prime. So I've seen both movies. Okay, now I watched them out of order. It is called Forbidden Empire. First thing I'll say, uh, that title makes no sense. Okay, because there's no empire. He goes, he goes to a village. He goes to a small village mm. of like 20 people, and there's like this mystery with ghosts. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a like a like a Scooby Doo type thing, and then there's this weird weird sort of branching story sort of bookending the film mm. where we see in Iron Mask he's got a girlfriend he's like 
sleeping with the daughter of Charles Dance, who's like this fancy nobleman lord. Right, yeah. And he keeps sending messages via carrier pigeon, mm -hmm. and Charles Dance collects all of the messages. He doesn't let his daughter get any of them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the movie, uh, she gives birth to Jonathan's daughter, and Charles Dance has an uncharacteristic change of heart, and he says, you know, I've read all of these letters, and I've changed my opinion about that Jonathan Green. That guy's all right. I'm going to publish all of these. Uh, and then the the movie ends. Okay. Uh, and it ends with him uh, going off to China. That seems like a decent idea for a movie. Like, a nice little swashbuckling creature feature. It was filmed in 3D, mm -hmm. much like parts of... Iron oh, Mask obviously are. Oh, they, they come at you. They, they come, come at, at you hard, hard and fast. Yeah. <laughs> There's a hard start 3D of that movie. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bury that into the ground, the mm -hmm. hard start. Yeah, so it is so it is a very weird trajectory to this movie that was a massive success in Russia and nowhere else mm -hmm. made all the money in Russia, and then a sequel was put into turnaround almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And it came out five years later with these two major movie stars yeah. in minor supporting parts. But I don't know if you noticed in the end credits, Jameson, both Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger are producers oh, on really? this movie. Oh. Jackie Chan is the main producer and Arnold Schwarzenegger has an executive producer credit. Hmm. So they are behind this movie. They are, they're they're not doing this for like a paycheck or like, you know, like a trip to Russia or something, or like wherever they filmed it and stuff like they that. They were probably they, just looking for an excuse to work together. And they figured, hey, the rights to this property are, I don't know if they're lapsing or they're cheap, that they can combine their massive fortunes together. And it's like, hey, let's like shoehorn ourselves into this franchise. Right. Yeah, that's that's the vibe I'm getting from this. Because they've always wanted to, to, to square off with each other. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And we get that. Yeah. We get oh, we that do. in this movie. And, and we you get know it, what? We get it fairly early, too. We get it fairly early. And you know what? It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, I mean, like, you know, like, obviously, Jackie Chan is, old. I mean, they're both older now. They're not at, like, the height of their of their prowesses. There's uh, obviously lots of, like, camera trickery mm. and tight choreography going on here. Mm. But finally getting to see Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan in a fist fight. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's probably, like, the early highlight of the movie for me. Yeah. And when you messaged me, because uh, you watched the movie ahead of time, and you said, like, this is very much in the vein of, like, a Pirates of the Caribbean. And, that, and that's a pretty accurate comparison when you're talking about the fight scene between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan. It's, like, it's comparable to the Jack Sparrow and Will Turner fight from the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Because it's well shot, it's well choreographed, they're on this practical set. There's like an element where the stage is moving around them and like they're cracking jokes and it's lighthearted and fun. And yeah, just like seeing these guys, like their combined history, duking it out on like this interesting practical set. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just great. I, yeah. I, I thought it was fantastic. There's one part in the fight where um, Jackie Chan keeps going for a weapon. And yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, great, who's, like, who's like collecting all these like famous treasure, he's like, no, 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 don't use that one. Uh, okay, fine. Like I'll use this. No, 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 that one either. Like, well, what can I use? And then they just like toss their weapons away and duke it out with their fists. It's, yeah. It's and great. then Arnold, yeah, Arnold throws his weapon down and is all like, you know, fair compromise. You yeah. Know? Like they're rivals but you know like they, they but they both have honor yeah you know yeah it's the Arnold, combined history of like both being like action and comedy stars he like, has the coming together he has the uh the helmet of spartacus he very pointedly says he has king arthur's sword which he's, like think about that king arthur's sword is all like first of all arnold he's the, fictional the sword has a name yeah well okay fiction look this is a movie where there's a literal dragon so like, let's let's maybe like assume so this movie is marketed on the star power of these two guys, and I can definitely see a lot of people tuning into this movie and being confused oh, yeah. and disappointed because the fight is early and the fight is fun, but then Jackie and Arnold are out of the movie for well over an hour and don't, yeah. don't show up again until the very end. Yeah, so like the, the setup to this is that we're given a backstory of this ancient dragon who has like these magical properties that allows like this healing tea to be made uh, in like the secret village, magic, mystical village in China. The tea is made from the dragon's eyelashes. Yeah. Which continue to grow and then go down into, into the, the earth. i too ignorant to know whether or not this is based on actual Chinese legend, mm -hmm. you know, uh, given the fact that this is this is not a Chinese movie. This is a movie set in China, uh, primarily stars mostly Chinese actors. It is 100% Russian. Oh, yeah. It is a very weird sort of like... Joint venture. Joint venture. <laughs> and it's definitely weird when you watch it when it's entirely dubbed into English. 
Yeah. So there's like you're dealing with like three different like languages uh, oh, all yeah. at the same even, time here. Even like the Russian characters are dubbed to sound American, which is odd. Which is a choice. Yeah. Like there's this uh, warring faction between like the the good white wizards and the bad black wizards. Because that's how it works in life. Yeah. <laughs> this narration is like really badly written too, because like I don't know whoever. At first I thought it was Charles Dance, but like whoever's doing the narration literally says the wizards went to the evil side. Yes. <laughs> which sounds like something a nine year old would write and then some of the wizards got greedy they went to the evil side to control the dragon that wasn't charles dance doing the year i could have been it yeah. could have, it, it was just like an old english person so yeah so yeah so the 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 black witches went to the evil side they uh they kidnap the head white wizard and they imprison him in england somehow yes I, I, like they frame him for something and <laughs> they now he's in prison in they england. just i guess they must have yes so like the there, there's a witch there's the two-faced witch mm -hmm. and she takes over this chinese village and she seizes control of the tea mm -hmm. the, the two people who are in charge confusingly are the master played mm -hmm. by jackie chan and the princess yeah now would that not make him the king or the emperor perhaps but he's just yeah. the master yes but Ma she's the princess uh, maybe when you become the master you renounce all titles sure sure okay. I'm, I'm willing to go with that okay i but mean yeah. that's not explained so jackie chan gets sent over to like the tower of london which is uh, run by the warden arnold schwarzenegger who plays james hook mm -hmm. i kept waiting for there to be any sort of peter pan allusion to it like Captain Hook. That, a, Captain James Hook is his that, name. That's his name. Huh. Yeah. I never knew but, that. But uh, I don't know why he's given the name of James Hook. He doesn't have a hook. No. Nope. He's not really a pirate. Uh, he's not He's not even evil. He's like an no. honorable kind of character. But, well, in so much that like he's, he's the warden of this prison. And he has this system where he will go and beat up the prisoners. Like, he gives them a fighting chance to escape the prison. They basically have a money in the bank match where if you can get past Arnold <laughs> and climb the ladder. Like, climb the ladder! kid make yourself famous and if you can climb the ladder out of the prison he'll just let you go it's the same but you got to beat arnold schwarzenegger in a fight it's the same rules as the prison in dark knight rises the only difference is that arnold schwarzenegger is kicking your ass while you're trying to climb out of the pit <laughs> yeah yeah and the ladder is cool because it's on like a it's on a swivel so like it's on a swivel it's also not terribly i was gonna say long no like someone does eventually crawl out of the ladder when i saw him at the top of the ladder i'm all mm. like that's not that Long. Yeah. I feel like if Arnold had to catch his breath or something, he's probably letting people out of this prison constantly. I mean, the people that we see get out are this set of uh, martial arts triplets where they, they, they gang up on Arnie and one of them makes it to the top of the ladder and he's like, stop the, stop the fight. This man beat me in an honorable competition. He's free to go. And these brothers are free to go too. Well, no, no. The brother, uh, I should also point out, these brothers are actually all brothers in real life. I would assume so. Yes. Uh, they are the Lu brothers and they are playing the Liu brothers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're here because they're looking for Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. They got thrown into like the dungeon of the prison. They fight their way out. And after they fight out, it's all like, guess Jackie Chan's not here. And they mm -hmm. bounce. It's all like, you there's, didn't? Like, there's like other levels to this prison. He's like he's here. Yeah, you, he's right up there. You're prisoners of this place. You're not allowed to just like scour the entire tower looking for this guy. But yeah, Jackie Chan is trapped in the the tallest uh, keep on the tower with chained to two other prisoners. Yeah, chained to two other prisoners. One old like ancient old man. I want to spotlight this actor who plays the the, yeah. the old man. Well, let me just also say the other guy that he's chained up to is like the true czar of Russia. Yes, who Nicholas is... Nicholas the first, a real dude. Yeah, real guy from history who is where. Wearing the Iron Mask of the title. Sure. Uh, yes. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if that happened in real life, but mm. I think, I, yes, maybe they're they're drawing from other literary sources. Yeah. But so, yeah, this old prisoner, he's played by an actor named Christopher Fairbank. I just wanted to spotlight him because this guy's had a really fucking good career. He was one of the muggers at the beginning of uh, Tim Burton's Batman. Yep. You know how, like, that movie kind of, like, tricks you into thinking, oh, we're going to see, like, Thomas and Martha Wayne die, but then it turns it's out... It's Batman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's one of them. Mm. He's in Alien 3. He's in The Fifth Element. He's in two of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. He's the broker in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's in that Dwayne Johnson Hercules movie that no one remembers. Mm -hmm. I guess that's probably a nothing movie, isn't it? That'll make a running tally of movies that we consider okay. nothing movies. Uh, but then we would have to talk about Brett Ratner. Uh, never mind. We're yeah. not going to do Hercules. Yeah, and Peter the First is played by Yuri Kolokolnikov. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fuck that up. Sure. Kolokovanov. 
Golokovnov Yuri. I only mentioned him because he played uh, Stir in hmm. Game of Thrones. Uh, who was he again? He was the cannibal wildling who gets the axe in his head. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are these three prisoners. One of them is Jackie Chan, one of them is Iron Mask, and one of them is the third guy. Yeah. Somehow, the Tsar intercepts a messenger pigeon that was sent by Jonathan Green to, uh, to his lady love. Jonathan Green, the protagonist one of the protagonists in this movie (laughs) about midway through the movie i literally wrote down does this movie have a protagonist i don't think it does i I think if it does it's the princess oh oh, 100 percent. yeah yeah but But she's like a late protagonist arguably there are three to four protagonists in this movie but yeah the czar intercepts this messenger pigeon and then we're given like the awesome looking backstory where they're just recounting all the highlights of the original jonathan green movie so that scene where they showed From the first movie, they showed probably, like, the most gnarly part of that movie, where a bunch of people turn into, like, horrifying monsters, Mm. and it's, like, you can see, like, the the CGI transformations and stuff, Mm. and, like, that that scene goes on for even longer in the first movie, and it's just fucking metal as fuck. Like, it it looks like a fucking Iron Maiden cover. I mean, that entire sequence in the backstory just looked super cool. Yeah. Like, I was like, why the fuck am I not watching this movie? And it was just a sensory overload to get, like, that much content, like, with in the first yeah. five minutes of the movie in this montage yeah. sequence. But yeah, this is, this is where unsuspecting viewers are, are going to sort of like clue into the fact that, oh, this is a sequel and it's a sequel to a movie about this guy. This guy, this yeah. guy Jonathan Green, an inventor and a cartographer who's played by Jason Fleming. You familiar with Jason Not Fleming? Not really, no. Uh, he was one of the main guys in Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Okay. He's one of the, the central four dudes that like have to owe money oh, to people. This poor guy, he's probably thinking, oh, sweet, I got a whole franchise to myself. I'm the title character in like the number one film in Russia. This is yeah. this is some this is going to give me some clout. And the movie's going to be... And, and, the, the, se- and yeah. the sequel is going to have arguably two of the biggest international movie stars. And I'm not going to be on most of the posters. <laughs> yeah. And also the title of the movies, uh, the, the movies are named after a monster who is briefly in the first movie and mm. not in the second movie at all. Yeah. It is this, very weird. This is like how like Tony or how Robert Downey Jr. was in like Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> he's like not the principal guy in this movie, but like he just shows up to yeah. help out these other characters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Other Jason Fleming movie. He's Dr. Jekyll in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh yeah. He's Azazel the the teleporter in um X-Men First Class. Okay. The guy who looks the like red, the, the red, red guy. guy. Yeah. 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 He's in stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, it is it is interesting that, yes, that mm. this is his franchise. Yeah. And he is a British character actor. And, like, it, it's really funny that the director, I haven't met the director, uh, uh, Oleg Stepchenko. Yeah. A uh, great Russian name. It's funny that, like, he went out of his way to get, like, actual British people to play some of the roles, but mm. not all, all of them. All of them, yeah. Because, like, the wife... Or fiance. Miss Dudley. Miss Dudley. Mm-hmm. That's a Russian actress. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird that he got... Like, like Jason Fleming isn't a name actor. He's very much like a character actor. So it's, mm. it's interesting that he got like a lesser known British guy to be the star of his movie. He could have just cast a Russian guy and I don't think anyone would have noticed or, if you're gonna noticed d- or cared. If you're going to dub it afterwards anyways, like who gives a shit? Yeah. So Jason Fleming was uh, kidnapped or no, he was imprisoned in Russia and he's sending his last messenger pigeon to his uh, lady love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Dudley to uh, just like let her, let her know what's going on and that he needs help. The Russians are takes this letter and almost o- writes over it, doesn't he? Like he takes the the, uh, the piece of paper and uh, he writes on the other side of it and well, he sends that off. Jonathan writes in code. He writes backwards like Leonardo da Vinci. So you need a mirror to decode sure, what yeah. they're doing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Nicholas he he gets this. Yeah, it's almost like a weird coincidence because he wasn't. Sending... It's one of the movie's many contrivances. Yeah, because he wasn't <laughs> sending the carrier pigeon to the tower. Or prison. Mm-hmm. He just saw a pigeon go by. Well, I think he was trying to get a bird to eat. Yeah. And then he just happened to grab that dove. A, that carrier pigeon. Yeah, yeah. And then they read the thing, and then and then he realized this could be a way to get, get out of here, or just send a message mm-hmm. that I'm here mm-hmm. and that I'm the real czar, and that there's like an imposter in my place. Yeah. So he sends it back to Jonathan, or does it go? No, to... it goes directly to Miss Dudley, who we right. we are introduced while she's like just shooting all of her fine china. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a time as a woman in 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 that era, you know, there's not a, a lot well-to-do to do. woman, yeah. You know, 
There's no reality television. I, I'm sure that's it. all explained in the first movie. <laughs> Not at all. She's yeah. she's <laughs> barely in the first movie. She gets a lot more to do in this movie. She yeah. is part of the action in this movie. She to this is. Credit. Would you say she's the film's comedy relief? She's one of many. Yeah. One of many. Because she's very... I mean, like... I Very talkative. <laughs> I mentioned Indiana Jones 2 earlier. She's very much the Winnie of this movie. Because she's yeah. along for the journey. But she's not happy that mm. she's along for the journey. She'd rather be anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. This is where I'm a little... Hate. So he ends up in a Russian prison. He Well, he goes to meet with the Tsar. Mm -hmm. And he identifies almost immediately that the Tsar is... A fraud. A fraud. Because I wrote down this one line that the Tsar says. <laughs> the Tsar's saying, like, The eagle is our national bird. None may defecate while in eagle pose. And I'm like, all right. I don't know what that means, but I'm writing that shit None down. None may defecate. Um, gotcha. So Jonathan Green gets thrown into the prison because he's like, that's not the Tsar. And they're all like, shut up. And he gets thrown into the prison and he meets a Chinese boy who Shen is... Shen Lan. Obviously a woman, but mm -hmm. we're just going to go along with this. And as soon as this character showed, I'm like, oh, that's the princess. Yeah. That's the princess mentioned from the narration. From the, from the backstory. From, from the beginning. And when you know it, it's, yeah, it's Jackie Chan's daughter. So when yeah. he mentions that, uh, oh, I befriended someone here in the present named uh, Shen Lan and Jackie Chan, when he hears the Russian Tsar read that from the note, he's like, oh, that's my daughter. Well, small world, right? Small world, yes. <laughs> One of many contrivances. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Jonathan Green gets bailed out by Rutger Hauer. Yeah, riding in on a pig chariot. <laughs> I was like, no, there's no way that's Rutger Hauer. Holy shit, it's Rutger Hauer. This was the first movie that was released after his death. Oh. Uh, there's not even like a posthumous, uh, like, in Loving No, because it, it, well, because it happened like within months. Of him dying. Okay. This, like, this movie like released, I believe, in like September of 2019 in Russia, of yeah. course. This movie did not have a theatrical release outside of Russia and other parts oh, of Europe. Oh, go figure. I imagine. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's... We can understand why Jackie and Arnold are in this because they're producers mm -hmm. and they wanted to do something that was a little more international. Jason Fleming, obviously, he's an act... Like, he's a working actor, so if, like, a crazy Russian director comes and says, do you want to be the star of my movie... You can speak English the entire time. You don't have to learn Russian. He's Just all get like, my name right yeah, on the check. Yeah, get it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no idea why Rutger Hauer is in he's not one, a... one scene, maybe four lines. He's not in the first movie? He, nope. Okay. He's not in the first movie. <laughs> he just shows up in this to, to get Jonathan out of prison. He's just, he's just ambassador. Yeah. He just shows up and then... That's uh, a wrap on Rutger that's Hauer. That's a wrap on Rutger. He went <laughs> more back ways to, than one. He, he went back to his trailer and then continued to slowly die, I guess. Oh <laughs> R.I.P. And uh, and so Jonathan, as he's going, he says, like, I the princess is getting whipped. And mm. so he says, like, I need that boy. I need an assistant. I need to go. Mm -hmm. So he, he bails her out as well, too. Mm. She she sits on the top of his carriage the, yeah. the entire time. Which is weird. Uh, I don't it's know. a little odd, but, you know. Yeah. Because she doesn't want him to find out that she's, she's a, woman. a woman. So I guess her way of doing that is like, I'm going to go as far away from you as possible. Yeah. I'm not going to ride in the same carriage as you. Oh, uh, like, maybe this is jumping ahead a little bit. But one thing I'll say about, like, the Jonathan Green character sort of being this movie franchise getting taken away from him is it prevents the white savior trope from occurring with this movie. Sure, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, cuz yeah, he, it is him going to the Chinese village and then as soon as they get there, the princess is like, I have to be the action hero now and mm -hmm. she immediately jumps in and becomes because he, he, wants, come, he, he becomes wants, the hero of the movie. Like because Jonathan wants to hightail it and get the fuck out of there yeah. when he realizes things things are going down. When we get to it, like I'll, I'll bring up my second point of that. But, sure, but like yeah, just like the, I want to get that out of the way that this is you know a, a, a twist on the white savior. Well, they're just, they're just not doing it. They're not doing yeah. that trope. He saves nothing. Yeah. He he is involved. Mm. He helps a little bit. You but... know who helps a lot? The flying monkey monster creature. <laughs> right. <laughs> that stows away when he leaves fucking Transylvania in the awesome backstory. So, here's the interesting thing. So, at the end of the first movie, at the mm. end of V, it does end with a little creature going into Jonathan's, like, carriage, like, sneaking mm. away. Mm. It has been, like, completely, like, redone for this movie. They have, like, this eminently markable little... Baby Yoda-esque gl kind of... Gleep Glorp, or, yeah, like, yeah. whatever, because I don't think he even comes... They don't even, like, name him. No. I don't think they... I, if, if he has, like, yeah. a name, I, I, I missed it. He's the, he's the monkey monster. He's the monkey man. Uh, Flying monkey monster. But in the first movie, 
he's this terrifying little Jesus thing. Christ. Yeah. Like so Gollum I, with wings. I guess they think that's exactly what it looks like. Um, By way of predator. By way, with a big predator mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I guess they just figured, well, that's not a marketable. Yeah, that's so not going to that's that's gonna gonna play gonna with work. kids. So they, yeah, they turned him into like a, a like a, like a cuddly little like gizmo creature. CGI type whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then they're off on an adventure to China. Mm. They get uh, ambushed by some Cossacks and uh, Shun, Shun Lan and uh, the monkey monster uh fight him off and, and Jonathan uh, kind of cowers in fear because mm, he's, he's not the fucking star of his, this franchise anymore <laughs> yeah and then uh, we take like like a solid 40 minutes away from that story yeah <laughs> like the movie just stops being about them yeah. for a while like this movie has a, like three different plots and I will say that they're all kind of given a lot of room yeah. to like take up some real estate and like get their their points across this movie almost needed to be structured either like a Quentin Tarantino movie or like an episode of Frasier you mm. know with like different title cards Little act breaks yeah. And, yeah like here's the story about the, the master and James Hook here's the story of the princess and Jonathan Green Here's the story of the, the Russian Czar the, and Miss Dudley and Miss Dudley on the the pirate ship, yeah. which is which is we haven't like, gotten to yet. But. We haven't gone to it, it's it's very nice. So next is the sequence with Jackie and Arnold, which yeah, they, we've I talk, guess we've gone we talked about. Over. Yeah, it's a really fun fight where um, the Czar and uh, Jackie Chan get free of their bonds because the old man dies. Yeah, because he sees Miss Dudley and he apparently she, dies of horniness. Yeah. <laughs> So she goes to the prison because, uh, like, in the note that the czar sent, uh, he said, like, oh, I'm I'm wrongfully imprisoned here in the London Tower. She goes there to talk about, oh, you got a letter from my from my husband or whatever. Like, you know, like tell me about him. And yeah, then they just hatch a plan to, uh, to to sneak off to Russia. The old man dies when he ha catches a good look a at Miss Dudley. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's very spontaneous because, like, the old man dying was not part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, like, they were, like, trying to, like, figure out how to escape at that point. Miss Dudley is on on her way out of the building. Mm -hmm. And then the old man dies, and then they only escape through the sheer incompetency of Arnold's guards. Yeah. Because they're just like, okay, let's haul this old man out of here. They haul him out. They have to then, loosen the chains because yeah. they're all chained together. And, and then as soon as they realize that they're hauling the old man out, they like look at each other and, and they realize, oh, these two guys were chained to this guy. Oops. Yep. <laughs> and then the other two like break out because he's a master of kung fu. Mm -hmm. And it's like, did you have no protocol <laughs> set in place for like, I guess, no, this, nothing I guess in these the guys have been here for a while. There's but, nothing like, in the manual about like what to do when like an ancient kung fu master is uh, is on the running loose. And Arnold, person. as soon as he finds out that Jackie Chan has escaped, he like starts getting like a glimpse in his eyes all like ah i've been waiting for this moment for a long time it's all like we've been looking for a project to do together and this is our chance <laughs> it's like it seems like you fight prisoners on a daily basis why didn't you just like unchain jackie chan and just, i still like, don't know fight at any point i but... still don't understand why like he was extradited to be imprisoned in england for like the crime of protecting he, the ancient dragon he was framed by the witch Sure. Is is what like the narration I think tells us gets yeah. across. He, it just says that they were imprisoned on opposite sides of the world, so it was hard for them to get back yeah. together. Because we also didn't mention that there's like the dragon seal. Yeah, yeah. Which like command whoever has that like commands the the dragon. And who has the dragon seal at this point? Jackie Chan finds it in like the warden's drawer, and he pass that's right. He passes it off to the czar yes. because. He's he's held up in a fight with Arnold, so he says like, "You Russian czar, yeah. take this amulet." Arnold has the dragon seal. That's take, right. Take yeah. this amulet and uh, get yourself get your ass to China. Get your ass to China. <laughs> yeah. And then Arnold says, "That's my line." <laughs> yeah, and Jackie and then... Chan is uh, he's recaptured, and then he's like removed from this Look, movie I, for a bit. <laughs> I gotta say, for as fun as this fight is, for as fun as like this long extended bit is, uh, the ending uh, kind of sucks because yep. like he kind of just like climbs to the top. He's still got the chain attached to him. Hmm. Arnold just kind of doesn't even grab the chain, just kind of like touches the chain. He's like, ha ha, I have you. And Jackie Chan's like, well, shit. Sure. Fuck. And yeah, yeah and at, that's, at his age, he can't do like yeah. a lot of the elaborate so, like, that's I, gotta, I gotta go back to my cell for a minute. I'm, that's right. Yeah, my doctor I'm, 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 told I'm, I'm, me I can't be leaping yeah. off like like 10 story yeah. buildings anymore. So the czar escapes in Miss Dudley's carriage. This is where I wrote down that now I'm getting like strong Pirates of the Caribbean vibes. Yeah. Just like the carriage going through the music saw like do 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 it's it's old world escape uh yeah escape act uh they they crash into a cart 
of fish, and one of the fish goes straight to the camera in 3D. I missed, I missed that. You missed, you missed the I, fish? I missed the fish. Oh my god, that was like the dumbest part of the movie. <laughs> I couldn't fucking write that down. And then it continues to be like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean when they uh, get onto a ship that is captained by an actual Actual actor actor from from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I was like, who have I seen this little person actor from? Of course, he's he's just like one of the extras yeah. in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's, now he's been upgraded to ship's captain. To ship's captain, he's yeah. Martin Kleba. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who who is the 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 captain of this ship and the the czar. Both the Tsar and Miss Dudley uh, simultaneously sneak onto the ship in, right. in disguises. Well, the Tsar has a very convincing way of sneaking onto the ship where he just, like, carries something big that obscures his face and he, like, yes. kind of blends in with all the other sailors. It is hard to blend in when you have Iron Mask on. Yeah. Yes. Um, Miss Dudley, on the other hand, uh, has this very elaborate thing where she is mistaken for a prostitute by one of the sailors who just so happens to be going onto the boat. She clubs him over the head, steals his... I love uh, a good club and then costume change. Yeah. Every time I see that, I'm happy yeah and this woman who is clearly a woman now just wearing like a sailor's jacket uh sneaks aboard the ship and blends in flawlessly and she would have continued to blend in if she didn't make the huge mistake of washing her bloomers and then hanging them up <laughs> uh where the the pirate flag would go i mean there's a, that was that was a bit contrived i mean there's this, kinda... this whole fucking stereotype in all these kind of like pirate or, or seafarer going movies where like oh women and ships are bad luck is this why they just don't want to look at her underwear <laughs> she's like hanging up the laundry but this is a world where, like, women can conceivably pass themselves off as men with, like... It happens really easily, yeah. Like, this is like a Shakespeare comedy. How It's how easy it is for women to just walk around as men and everyone's all like, Oh, how's yeah. it going, bro? Yeah. yeah. Two women in this movie convincingly pass themselves off as men just by, like, you know, hiding their hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. And changing nothing about themselves. Yeah. yeah. Two things I want to talk about this chunk of the movie. Mm. One, this sort of, like, market... Like this, like this, like dock market. The green light district. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck is up with that? I have no idea. The green light district. That's fucking funny, man. That, that, I, mean, I was just looking around. <laughs> Why? So this, this just like scene, this mm. set has the weirdest lighting. It's like there's a rave going on in like one of the other lime ra- jello green. It looks like like a fucking like evil scientist's laboratory. Mm-hmm. Or so it's it's just so weirdly lit. And I kept waiting for there to be like an explanation as to why it was lit this no. way and it never comes. It's just very odd. Yeah. <laughs> a very strange <laughs> choice of the lighting designer for this scene so the czar and miss dudley are quickly found out by the sailor crew and uh they're about to be like tossed overboard or whatever but then like this massive sea storm happens and the uh the the ship's captain is revealed to be a bit of a drunk or a coward or whatever he hides so it's up to um also you know not to be rude go on he's very short yes he's very small well there's that one joke not the easiest thing to do to steer the ship when you're a tiny little man Maybe on, like, calm water, sure, whatever. But, like, actually, yeah, come to think, there is that one part where, like, the czar, like, announces, like, I am the true uh, czar of Russia. Where is your captain? And he's like, he's right here. Where? I don't see him. He's right here in front of you. I don't see anyone. Like, oh, hello. Yeah. I mean, they do all of the hokey things. Like, yeah. the captain is, like, locked up later, and, like, Miss Dudley comes by with the key, but she, like, puts the key up top. Yeah. So you can't, like, reach it or whatever. Like, they do every hokey little person joke in mm-hmm. this. But, look, I'm not... I, I, it's great that someone of his stature rose to the level of captain mm. as, as as much as he did. I'm just saying there are like certain impracticalities when you're the one that has to steer the ship. Okay. Like maybe like maybe have, during, a, have a chair built for you or something. Yeah. You know? Maybe at least like during this particular storm because like you have like these ten story waves that sure. the galleon has to sail over. Have someone you can tag in mm. to take over. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, the czar has to like do all these sweet hairpin turns on this like massive ship to like the Dragon Rock. Yeah. What that, the fuck reef was this? This is a thing that's never commented on and drove me crazy. It's all like, we need to get through these rocks. We need to get through this thing. It's obviously like a giant monster skeleton yeah. with like fire in its eyes. And it's all like, okay, someone is upkeeping this. Yeah. Who lit the fire? This yeah. Something's going on. This is like Dragon Rock or something, but it's it's just never gone. It's just a, a, a thing that they need to get past. Mm-hmm. And it has to be massive for this galleon to sail through. Like it's whitewater rafting. It's crazy looking. But yeah, they make it through and uh, they win the respect of the uh, the sailing crew. Yeah, and they kind of like take over the thing. Uh, The czar gets his mask cut off. He gets the, at an hour into this movie, the iron mask comes off. Yeah. And then is never (laughs) referenced to again. Look, 
as unwieldy <laughs> and like scattershot a title as it is, the title for this movie that makes the most sense is Voyage to China. Mystery of the Dragon Seal colon Journey to China. Mm. Iron Mask doesn't make any ty- sense because that's not who the protagonist of the movie is. It's mm. just a minor plot point. And V2 doesn't make any sense because V isn't in this movie. No. So yeah. just call it like Mystery of the Dragon Seal because mm-hmm. that's... There, there is a mystery, there is a dragon seal, mm. and there is a journey to China. All of those things happen in the movie. Back to Jonathan Green and Shen Lin. After, like, <laughs> a, a lengthy time away. <laughs> meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile, at the gates of the Forbidden Village in China. <laughs> either, yeah, either, like, Fraser cards or that. Or yeah, specifically, yeah. like, <laughs> the Adam West a, Batman a narrator. 1920s radio announcer. <laughs> Yeah, so they um they go to uh, the princess's village. They realize that it's been taken over by like the witch and her uh, her evil minions there. Jonathan wants to hightail it out of there. Shenlin uh, sneaks into the village, and then we get to see the kind of goings on that are happening there. Like very late, like mm-hmm. over an hour into this movie, we're introduced to like these like mini bosses. Yeah, like the the, the, the these, cool co- these cool fucking guys. It's just like it don't don't you feel like these guys should have been like introduced in like the first scene mm. or something? Like they're like stealing coins from people. Like they all have like superpowers. Well, so like there's the um what, what do you what do you call that where there's like the uh, the emissary who has like a very bad dubbing. Um, oh, the treasurer. The treasurer. Yeah. Yeah. He's like yeah, I will he steal is, all your gold. He is yeah exactly. He's like a full anime voice. He's all like ah mm. oh, my queen yes yeah. gold money 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 and uh, yeah. So he's there with like the the evil foot soldiers, and they are accompanied by these four seven foot tall Power Ranger bad guys. Golems, yeah, practically. And they all have like really cool powers. Like there's like a one who who's like a smoke monster, one who's got control over electricity and magnetism, mm-hmm. one has like supersonic powers, and uh, and then there's like a and big then, rock monster. And then there's a rock monster who yeah. just walks around and punches things. Yeah, and they're yeah. they're really cool looking. Yes, <laughs> and they're mysterious. So you don't know what the fuck's going yeah. on with these guys. And they're mysterious. Well, so let, we'll jump kind of like ahead to like the reveal mm-hmm. of this because what's sort of interesting about this and like this is kind of in the first movie as well too in the first movie Jonathan is under the impression that there's actual monsters that are out to get him mm-hmm. and everything and then it's revealed at the end that it's kind of more of like a Scooby-Doo thing like there are some monster actual monsters but like the kind of like central mystery is that it's a little more man-made yeah. than, than he thought it they're, was. A, they're it was using science and, yeah. tr- and deception and, and trickery. Yeah, and yeah. that's what's happening in this movie too. Mm-hmm. Smoke um, and mirror shit. Yeah, yeah, like the the witch, quote unquote, the witch has all of these tricks mm-hmm. that are like gradually revealed to be just science. All of like these like Power Ranger henchmen, mm-hmm. it's all, they've like harnessed electricity. They have like power cells or yeah, like whatever. They make these batteries um, for the, yeah. I don't quite understand how the smoke guy works. Yeah. That seems like magic to yeah, me. Yeah, because like he'll, he'll fill like the room full of smoke just like out of these and like. And he like teleports. Pipe. Yeah, he does teleport and he becomes intangible. Which seems odd to me. If we were, if we were explained where, like, there are trap doors beneath all the floors or all the roads. Or if he has, like, rollerblades or yeah. something he can get around really fast. Mm. Or something. Well, we, we don't see that. We do, It's just kind of, like, led to believe it's all, like, no, this is all science. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, there are other things that the witch does that's kind of hard to explain away through mm-hmm. science. Like, she has, like, this series of... Because ma- she's she's pretending to be the princess. Yeah, she... Like, it's the, the same actress who is uh, now used, like... Which who's like playing both parts of like her evil witch, but only when she's wearing disguise. The mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, the uh, the the witch herself has like these hexadecimal masks where she puts yes, it on. Good call. And <laughs> and she becomes the princess, and she's fooled the entire town that she's actually like the true princess. And yeah. she's calling all the shots. I get the um, idea that it's suspension of disbelief. Like this is like you know like a movie. So it's the, the the same sort of suspension of disbelief with like the Mission Impossible masks. Yeah, where it's like in theory, it's all like okay. They wouldn't look that good. Mm-hmm. But, and, like, you're sort of, like, led to believe through technology that they can, Tom Cruise, look like Funny enough, a person. she doesn't really need to do that because the the witch, as the as the princess herself, never makes, like, a f- true public appearance. She's always, like, held up in the in the palace. They only ever let, like, you know, certain guests see her at a time, but they don't let the villagers see her. Ever. Um, she's always seen her, like, at a distance. I mean, like, yeah, she's at a distance. Yeah, so they get to the village, and like, this is where the movie basically becomes about... The princess. Chen, Chen Lang. Yeah. Chen Lang? Hey, I, I got that from memory. Good. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and now it's about this, and uh, Jonathan ends up in the court of the witch, but mm. he thinks that 
she's the princess. He's all like, "Hey, you look a lot like my my friend, oh, my my real right. friend." Because he never put it together. He never that, put two that, together. That, that, that's a woman. Yeah, he never. He always just assumes that Shenlin is a is a boy. And in fact, to like his written letters to uh, yeah. Miss Dudley, she, like she assumes it's a boy too until she meets Jackie Chan and he says. Oh, that's my daughter he must be talking about. And she's like, he's hanging out with another woman? Oh, I'm going to yeah. give it to There's him. There's a lot of that. Yeah, she grabs like a frying pan and yeah. she's all like, oh, I'm going to... She like rolls her sleeves up and is all like... Mm. Yeah, so I she's mean, she's, yeah. Not, she's less worried about or like the whereabouts and the safety of her husband and more just like assuming the worst of this guy. It's a, it, it's a well-written character is what we're saying. Sure. And, and then Jonathan does like the only thing that's like that he can do that is useful mm. and he starts cartographing he starts drawing maps, the maps of, of the the area, and as he's like exploring the palace grounds, just like through the you know the blessing of, of the queen, he does uncover that like her seven foot tall hench people are you know just like guys in robot yes. suits. So he realizes, oh, this like they're just tricking everyone. These aren't supernatural beings. And he also uncovers like the secret entrances to the palace. Why the fuck are they giving this guy so much free reign of the place if he's going to uncover all their fucking secrets? Because he's making a map. He's got to have free reign. He's got to be able to go around so he can draw all of the secret entrances yeah. oh, on the map. And, he's and they're probably going to kill him afterwards. Right. So. And, and he's only doing this because uh, the, the flying monkey monster who's like who stuck around with uh, Shun Lin. Meat Morp. Yeah. Meat Morp, yeah. He, <laughs> like, they, he's relaying messages between the two of them like, hey, Jonathan, you're actually in danger. Hey, make us a map and we'll come help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> I, th I don't know if I mentioned it. Like That's, that's sort of the broad reason why we're hanging this series of movies on this guy he's kind of going around drawing maps of the land and mm. like inventing things and trying to like get enough money and acclaim mm -hmm. to be good enough to marry charles dance's daughter so this is why he's on these adventures he's just kind of like a happy-go-lucky cartographer yeah who's, who's making maps and going he's on a, adventures he's a, and, a modern and, day so, oh, he's, and, a, he's a celebrity because everyone covering everyone loves his yeah. maps yeah so yeah. he's a beloved figure good maps yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all right maps. it's a superpower yeah i guess so yeah. all right matt can you <laughs> draw a map right now see how easy that shit is wow uh, listeners at home, uh, Jameson has shut my mouth immediately. That is uh, <laughs> a fan uh, fa fa fantastic map of my, my apartment. Oh, yes. My middle finger. He drew it all with his middle <laughs> finger. Um, so the czar shows up in the village. Uh, they, they make it there. Uh, he, he winds up with, uh, with Shen Lin relatively quickly and they hatch a plan to take out the evil queen that involves these hang gliders that apparently Jonathan That are just umbrellas. Yeah. Really. By the way, he he invented the hang glider. He, remember, he here he is doing it in a flashback that we didn't show earlier. It's a, this is a, a really easy, hand-wavy screenplay thing to do just by making him an inventor. Yeah. It's a really easy way to say, like, how do we get everybody to the palace really quick? He invented some bullshit. Yeah. There we go. Mm. That's, that's He's how, not there that's to teach people there. how to do it, but, yeah. like, hey, he showed that He to did you. it off cam. He did it in that 40 minutes we were on the boat. That person who was riding on top of his carriage the entire journey over? Yeah, she saw him invent the hang later. Yeah. <laughs> and how to use it, apparently. So the princess finally gets the dragon seal back. They kind of uh, sneak into the thing. There's, there's a scene earlier where we see the witch has control over the dragon like mm. the, the dragon from the beginning with the law and eyelashes yeah and she uses and, that to execute prisoners but yeah. we find out that it's actually just like this more smoke and mirrors yeah it's just like this big puppet that she makes yeah you know, she has like some guards even who are though operating it there is an actual dragon there's a literal dragon who's like chained up in like the the bottom because because she doesn't have mastery control. over it. she doesn't she have mastery over yeah. it so she can just uh chain She's... it up well we, we can't kill the dragon because the dragon makes tea yes. out of its eyelashes <laughs> as we all know <laughs> this whole from plot the hinges on tea from the classic <laughs> fable the dragon's eyelashes were tea the entire about... time tea is the key to everything in this in this film so yeah she kidnaps jonathan how the fuck does miss dudley wind up getting captured too oh she wants she's to just there she's just there and <laughs> she winds up getting uh, kidnapped too and she's uh she's tied up next to jonathan uh, the, the, the 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 front of the cave where the dragon's gonna come out the the puppet dragon's gonna yeah. come out and, and kill them uh then there's a band of cossack pirates who we actually haven't mentioned who are also the this movie may have too many characters. You think? Is the thing. <laughs> it has just, a lot of plots. just like a lot. Like the, the movie has no protagonist mm -hmm. and it has an influx of characters. We're, right now, mm -hmm. we're just mentioning the band of Cossack pirates well, no, who are also there well, and no, they like were the, part of the story. They were the sailors. That, yes. 
Exactly. I mean, were they? They weren't pirates, were they? They were like no. Sailors. I'm thinking of pirates because of the whole pirates, pirates of the, the Caribbean, Caribbean thing. But like, here. no, they're not. They're like they're like honest sailors. Is yeah. what they are. They're adventurers. Exactly. And they, they sneak in they and they storm the palace. They storm. They storm the palace. So we see like an old man get executed by the dragon when the dragon shoots lightning at him, mm-hmm. which is, which is the same power cells that they use for like mm-hmm. the lightning bad guy and everything. But he like is executed. He straight up like dies when like the dragon electrocutes him. Hmm. Jonathan and Miss Dudley get electrocuted a ton. Yeah. <laughs> they get like electrocuted like a bunch mm-hmm. and they are fine. Yeah. So I guess that old man was just really old. <laughs> His heart couldn't take it. His heart couldn't take because he only gets zapped once. He's just like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when I saw them well, starting because, to execute him, I'm because, like, oh shit, are they dead? Um, well, because you see, Jonathan and Miss Dudley there are important franchise characters. They need to yes. survive to, they need to, to, further, to, to further appear exactly. in other people's movies. It's why Mel Gibson didn't die when he got electrocuted in Lethal Weapons, because he has to keep going because there's more movies to make. Yeah. So, uh, through a ton of contrivances, the uh, the main characters get the upper hand on, uh, on the villains here. Like I will say this ending is kind of chaotic, and it is just kind of like, oh, we need to finish this movie so let's just have like multiple battles going on all mm. at once yeah like like everyone has like the, the uh they have to take care of the seven foot tall goons like yeah. the, the big power ranger monsters who kind of go down like in extended sequences can I, can I tell you since we're talking about that uh, let me tell you my favorite moment from this movie okay. the, the moment that just had me giggling like a maniac so they're taking down the the four major domos or whatever mm. there's like the horn guy the guy who uses like sonic waves and yeah. everything like that and no one can take him down captain marty Kleba mm-hmm. is like he so the guy blows the horn and everyone covers their ears mm. and the little captain realizes that the bad guy helmets can actually protect yes, their ears the, so. much like magneto if they mm-hmm. put that on like the, <laughs> like that, that that's protected from like the sonic waves mm-hmm. so he sneaks under the skirt of the big guy and he like takes a moment it's all like Huh. And then he just stands up. He just headbutts him. Heads, <laughs> heads, heads, headbutts him with the helmet right in the balls. Yeah, and that's enough to take down it's this. It's great. <laughs> it's I hilarious. loved it. That was <laughs> legitimately the funniest part of the movie. It was, I loved it. His his reaction was great. My favorite one is like there is one member of the uh, the sailor crew who's like dressed in black robes. So he kind of like is almost dressed the same way as like the bad guy foot soldiers. And he's just like looking at a map, hiding his face as a few of them run by like he somehow sneaks behind enemy lines and he blends in with these guys as he follows them down a tunnel and that's where you see that they're generating the power cells for like, the magnet electrical right back up. and so he's th- able to like you know fend them all off and stop the production of that and that's yeah. how they take but like he just manages to sneak he managed to blend in with these guys just because he's like hiding his face behind a map right and as we, we were saying just earlier that was just a guy yeah it wasn't one of our like Eight main characters that was just a guy who uncovered, like, this mm. central plot point. Yeah. That's just like, okay, maybe there's too many characters in this movie. So the evil witch tries to make her escape with all of her gold on, like, this sweet uh, hot air balloon. But in this She mo- does, like, a classic, like, so long, fools! <laughs> I love a good so long, fools. But at this moment, uh, the princess uses the amulet to free the dragon. And then she rides the dragon, much like in the end of uh, uh, Shang-Chi. Yeah, I was thinking of Shang-Chi a lot in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although this movie came out first, so maybe Marvel's ripping off Russia. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, Russia's got a lawsuit on their hands, <laughs> I, I think, here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so she chases down the hot air balloon, and then the princess and the evil queen have, like, a, a really sick kung fu battle on, like, mm-hmm. the top of the palace. Like, this set piece is actually pretty epic, because they're fucking, like, I don't know how many thousands of feet into the air, but, like, they're in a massive uh, tower. Yeah. We're speaking it, about contrivances, though. So, like, the witch still has the princess's face on. Mm-hmm. But then it, it like they gradually lose articles of clothing until they are basically identical. Yeah, and then like obviously the, the it, it's leading to like shoot yeah. me, no shoot yeah. me. You and, know? and of course like the evil witch has like a couple of uh, handmaidens who like also put on the princess's yeah. face mask, and now we have like four people having like these yeah. really acrobatic kung fu battles, and it looks cool. As shit. It looks really cool. The only thing that I will say is hard to follow. <laughs> how how did they know what the princess was going to be wearing on that? particular particular day they just all happen to also be wearing the same article of yeah. the clothing and it looks exactly the same it's like and it's like when that's kind of like the one thing where i'm all like okay they wouldn't mm. they wouldn't have time to like change costumes yeah they didn't even know she was there until she started attacking them so. just like when a, when two women show up to the same party wearing the same outfit and there's like they gotta oh, have a fight there's that tension the there yeah <laughs> that's that's why that tension is there exactly. it's all like 
do we have to fight now? Yeah. We're Damn right fight. we do, bitch. We're going to have to fight now. So, um... Uh, We're feminists on the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> Big allies over here. Um, so, the, the evil witch gets the upper hand. She gets the amulet from the princess just in time for all of uh, the major players to, to tour up to this top platform. And it's like, oh, look, the that princess has the amulet. She must be the good one. And the only person who recognizes the princess, the true princess to being who she is, is the flying monkey monster. Of course. Which I think is stupid as fuck. Yeah. You know why? Well, the, the way that I would have fixed this, and I was saying this before about, like, the, the, the white savior trope, there needed to be at least one scene where uh, Jonathan and Chun... I was going to say Chun-Li. <laughs> were, 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 were he and the princess bond? You know, like maybe she does go into the, the carriage and they just have like a conversation and she learns something about him or like he passes on like some like bit of information that only he would know and then she repeats it to Jonathan when he's on the scene. Yeah, something like that. And he would have been like, no, this, only she would know this fact about me. That's the real princess. And then this tangentially could have been like a true sequel to his own movie where he does something important. He did, yeah, he does something <laughs> that affects the story of the movie. Yeah. I mean, there is like a scene like when like Jonathan gets kidnapped and Chen Lan is saying like, we need to save Jonathan. He's my friend. And mm. I did kind of go like, is did, he? You, did you talk? I mean, he's, he saved you from prison. Mm -hmm. So like you... You owe him like a debt or something. He, but, and like, he gave you a lift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't really like do any bonding mm -hmm. over that trip. You, you barely talked. Yeah. But anyways, the monkey recognizes it. So that's yeah. what's important. <laughs> and then I should stop saying the monkey because he's like a flying gremlin creature. <laughs> yeah. Please. He has a name. It's Meatball. Gotcha. Gotcha. Meatball. Uh, so the witch stabs Meatball. Like she hurts him. Yeah. So she he... like, knocks him out of the air. Yeah. And Chen has to choose between the talisman or Bleep Blorp. Mm -hmm. And of course, she saves the flying monkey man. Mm. And, and the empress falls to her, or the evil witch falls to her death. Along with the, the drake. What, what's the pendant? Why can't I think of the word right now? It, it's an amulet talisman. It, Am it's no, it's the MacGuffin. It, <laughs> seal. The seal. The seal. The, the That's why I couldn't think of the word, because it's it means a, 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 an animal. Um, um, and it's like, oh, the true power of the Was love. Yeah. It's, it was love it, the it entire time. It senses pure of heart and all that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So you never needed this talisman to begin with. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way, there's a fake out, and we think Jonathan Green has been killed. But it's like, no, he's the protagonist of this series. I'm assuming he probably makes it. Yeah, he, um, uh, the, the evil witch throws, like, a needle at him, and it gets him in the heart. But, oh, it actually got him in, like, this pendant he has of yeah, Miss Dudley. It's, that uh, old chestnut. And then uh, the movie is wrapped up very... Well, that portion of the movie is wrapped up quickly in, like, a scene where they write a letter to Charles Dance, who's just sort of recounting... And I guess Charles Dance has enough power to spring Jackie Chan from prison. <laughs> yeah. And Arnold... On, on... And it's just all, like... You're out, you're out of here. It's, it was it was an honor to have you in my prison. And Jackie Chan's all like, you were the, the toughest opponent that I've ever fought. And in, in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in a line that... Even more, he doesn't believe. More or less confirms why Arnold Schwarzenegger is the executive producer of this movie. He's all like, I'll give you some money if, if, Jackie, if you, Jackie Chan, Jackie, Jackie Chan says that I am unbeatable. Um, <laughs> and, get uh, ready for that impression a ton over this series, yeah. by the way, folks. If anything, we haven't done it enough. And so Jackie Chan <laughs> says, like, well, like, my my new friend, Captain Hook, like, <laughs> I'll take you to China and you'll see, uh, the, like, this legendary dragon for yourself. And, uh, he, like, so where is the dragon? And yeah, they the, go to China. Which Jackie we have seen, us, which we yeah. have seen is actually a true... It's a li tangible dragon. It's a living that creature. That you can ride. Mm -hmm. It's eyelashes make tea, as we all know. And he's like, so where is the dragon? And Jackie Chan says, oh, the dragon is all around you when you look at the mountains and when you look at the sky. And, when, like, the, it's all around. It's like... And the, Arnold's just like, ha ha. I get it now. It's, I get it. It's beautiful. It's a metaphor. And it's just like, no, there's he, a he's literal, got a, he's there's got a real a dragon. a fucking dragon. Where'd it go? <laughs> the real dragon were the friends we made along the way. And then the movie ends, the credits roll. We never catch up with what happened with Nicholas the First, even though he is the Iron Mask of the title. Mm -hmm. and he just He's just kind of dropped as a character. Yeah, does he, like, re claim the throne is that going to be something for the sequel i guess you got to hit your history books people yeah uh there is a That's sequel gonna... <laughs> that... in, in production yes there is it it, appear, it is tentatively titled to come out iron this, Ma 
this year. Oh. It is still annoyingly called V3. Endgame. Endgame, yes. <laughs> Maybe V will show up in this one. Mm. Who knows? But the uh, surtitle is Journey to India. Ooh. So we're going all over the world here. Yeah, this so, real uh, trotting so adventure. This, so this is going to be like a, a Russian filmmaker's take on Bollywood? I'm assuming. Oh, I hope so. Because, like, the first movie... <laughs> see what they're doing with, with Chinese uh, myth and legend? Like, I can't wait to see what they do with other cultures' myth and legend. Sure, why, why, not? why not? I mean, like, okay, look... I'm not being sarcastic. Look, I think that's... I, I, you can't see our faces, so I'm going to, like, stun you all by saying neither of us are Chinese. Mm-hmm. So we can't speak on how, like, culturally sensitive this... Because this is, like, a white person making, like, a movie about, like, Asian culture. So it, it's, like, it's, like, too... Very different cultures. Not that different. They're both communist. So that's like, not a culture. That's a government. <laughs> I didn't say it was like a culture. I I said they had similarities. Okay, fine. They both like the workers. Food the and- workers' means of production. But so it'll be interesting to see how this. It, I want to watch this third movie now. I'm in for. So. I'm in for a penny now. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious <laughs> you're, to see. You're way more invested in this franchise than I am. Jason Fleming, the Miss Dudley, and Marty Kleba are all are all <laughs> sign on to that. No word yet if Charles Dance is, is going to be in it. I I would have. I would say no, considering gotta, how much he, how little he had to do in this. The last thing I want to say about this movie is that this movie really straddles the line between looking really impressive, yeah. and also like total dog shit. Like yeah. it, 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 like in terms of like production design and costume design, it's gorgeous. Like so much detail is oh, put into every frame. Every practical effect looks great. Yeah, I say like all the sets look good. The CGI not so much. No, it really shows kind of like the difference between the Russian film industry and the the American film industry. Yeah, like ILM like, did not work on this movie, and yeah. it shows. But uh, still, like especially the scene, the fight scene between Arnie and uh, and Jackie Chan in the prison. That looks fantastic. That is well shot. That is well executed. The big final set piece in the battles of the palace, they look pretty good. Until they go to the sky and it's like the dragon fighting a hard air balloon. The, I'll, I'll say like the hand-to-hand combat stuff is all really good. Yeah. You mentioned Shang-Chi. Like, I remember when I was watching that movie in theaters last year, I was thinking like, okay, this this looks pretty dodgy. This doesn't look great. And then I watched this. I'm all like, you know what? You know what? I take Sh- it back. Shang-Chi looks pretty good. It's a pretty good looking movie. <laughs> a fucking Marvel movie looks better than this? No shit. <laughs> They might have had some money. They might have had like a little bit more money to, to put into this. Yeah. So I guess all that's left to do now is to uh, ask the question, Jameson, does this movie have a certain something? Or is it just a big oh. punch of nothing? Uh, oh, something or nothing. Uh, this movie has something to it. I would agree. This movie has. This movie definitely has something. Yeah. Look, I, to elaborate on that, I think that the good parallel to it is the uh, like the swashbuckling Pirates of the Caribbean movies. This was, this was like almost like a throwback to those because I think it's been a long time since I've enjoyed something like that like a, a practical set action movie where it's people fighting people good stunt coordination i think the plot is just all over the fucking place because it's trying to do too much but also the, being tangentially a yeah. sequel to a, a movie that i had never seen and is not even truly honoring so it's a little confusing in that regard that said the action pieces are are really good and i would recommend it based on that and just like how imaginative it is yeah i i would add on to that the fact that it's a foreign movie Mm. I think gives it a lot of carte blanche to put up with things that might kind of confuse us or put us off if we yes. were watching like a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Like the structure is definitely a little bit weird, but the fact that it is a different kind of cinema, mm. you kind of just like accept it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, this movie's doing something different. This movie mm. is for like an audience that uh, is, is like not, an, isn't an audience that I'm usually a part of. Yeah, it's not following like the uh, the structure, the structure of, of a yeah, yeah not, not following the structure of a North American action movie, which like you and, and I are. And that's fine because like God, yeah. like I'm so sick of that structure mm-hmm. at this point. You know, like it's so well trodden. Mm-hmm. You know, like just show me anything different mm-hmm. at, at, at this point. Like there's yeah. a reason like those latter day Pirates of the Caribbean movies are just. Awful. torture to get through because yeah. it's all like that we know what's going to happen in this you know mm-hmm. it's all like this is like the, this movie sort of reinvented the swashbuckler yeah in a way where it's a tip of a hat to it in uh in, in many regards Definitely. yeah okay okay great well new podcast we're still not sure how to end it we're gonna like <laughs> we're gonna change some uh change some social media stuff around obviously mm. so like follow us we don't know how to follow yet but we'll we'll let you know in, in upcoming episodes maybe the next episode oh here's something new here's what we'll do mm. here's here's a, here's another way we're gonna differentiate this podcast from the fuck is this next episode oh yeah we're gonna reveal 
what the next movie is going to be. It's always been a surprise, mm-hmm. but this time, given like the structure of what we're doing here, mm-hmm. we'll either at the end of these we're going to be announcing who the next actor is that we're going to be following, or we're just going to say the what the, the next film in the trilogy we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So today we took a look at a movie from 2019, one end, tail end of Arnold's current filmography. Mm-hmm. For our next episode, we're going. All the way back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. All the way back to, and I want to make sure I get like the year appropriately. So you know, fill time mm-hmm. uh, while I look. Oh this up. Uh, yeah, we're going back to the 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 hay days, the the halcyon the, the, days, the days of, of hay. Yeah. We're going all the way back to the year of 1979. This was before Conan the Barbarian, mm-hmm. but he is still on the poster. The movie that we are going to be watching is 1979's. The Villain, Mm. directed by Hal Needham, director of Smokey and the Bandit, (laughs) Cannibal Run, Stroker Ace, Megaforce, other movies that star Burt Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson. (laughs) Uh, Megaforce is a great fucking title track. The Villain, Mm -hmm. Kirk Douglas, oh, and Margaret. Hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Third build. <laughs> Third build. Mm. It is a Western comedy. Nice. Yeah, this is some classic 1970s comedy cheese. Mm. It's not a movie that anyone talks about, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, I feel like maybe this should be like a rule that we should try to follow when we pick these movies, is we should try and make sure that the actor is on the poster. Okay. In some way. Either their name is there mm. or their face, face is there. Is there. Mm. This one counts. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, inexplicably, I think is like second or third build mm-hmm. in this movie. For his, He should be getting the and. Okay. This is an and performance. Okay. But like the credits for this movie are uh, uh, for Iron Mask are wacky. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. Next week. Not next week. Not next week. Jesus who Christ. Knows, who the next episode. Next episode. The villain. Mm-hmm. After that. TBA. Yeah. We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was Nothing Movies. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Cass Lasgard. Oh, I'm Jameson Rafter. And uh, as we end every episode, we're going to... What are we going to do? We're going to pull the plug? What was the plan? Uh, well, I was going to say, like, what did we learn? But I think we're going to save that for the end of trilogy. End of the trilogy, yeah. yeah. I don't know. We still haven't figured out how to end this. Oh yet. yeah, um, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> we're gonna figure it out. I like it just like petering up to nothing though, <laughs> like just sputtering to the finish. Sputtering line. <laughs> out in the and we just like overlay like the music over mm. top of this, and then we're just like, I don't know, because all of, we all, we we definitely had ways of ending. What? How did we end the podcast? Before we had like a sign off phrase. Before we had a sign off phrase. Before I did, do you stay frosty, yeah. deputy dogs? Uh, before, yeah, uh, we didn't do anything. Did we just say? Uh, we just said like good night, everybody, and that, okay. kind of that. Yeah. Well, good night, everybody. <laughs> we'll we'll go to the drawing board on this. And hey, no, don't you say no, it. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Mm. I was just gonna say, we'll be back.